Okay, so we need to make sure that all these pigs can get something to eat. That's up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're com coming to you this morning on a very, very cold Black Friday morning 2020. So we have eight pigs that just got up this morning, are trying to have breakfast and they're fighting over it. <laughs> so you can see we've got eight pigs back here basically all trying to get in to our two head feeder and while they're all getting a little bit, they're not all getting their fair share. What we wanna to try to get done today, we've actually already started. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewind the clock just a little bit and show you the delivery of the materials that we're gonna be using in order to get our new pig feeder built today. So you can see we started getting the major parts glued together and for the most part, they're ready to go. The design of the new feeder is gonna be very similar to the one that you see back here. We are gonna make a couple of adjustments slash improvements and also make it much, much bigger. So this one here, you can see we've got three pigs kind of eating out of it and we've got a few pigs that are essentially waiting around to get into it. We've got eight pigs this round. We've always had two to three, um, but from a business standpoint, we need to be able to expand that just a little bit. And so we wanna make sure we can at least get 12 to 16 pigs on one feeder. So we definitely need to increase the size of this. We're gonna go from a two head feeder to a six head feeder Let's go ahead and take a look at where we stand now as far as that new feeder is concerned, and let's go over some of the dimensions. So I've got some specs that I just kind of drew out uh, as far as what we think we're gonna be building today. Now I am gonna say I am not a woodworker by any means, but we've built a couple things, so you're watching a rookie kind of do a lot of this stuff. The two by 12s are basically the main frame on the outside back and front of this feeder. And to kind of give you an idea, this will be the back of the feeder and this will be the front of the feeder as far as the front face. So this is the base of the feeder. You can see we have a two by 12 and a two by 10 that are connected together again, six foot long or wide. It'll give you an idea again of the dimensions. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and start connecting some of our pieces. The design itself, you'll see as it goes together, is pretty basic. You've got a stand in the back, and then we've got a little bit of an L where we're gonna have flaps for the pigs to basically come into here and feed. A few other things that you're gonna need to have, you're gonna need to have plenty of screws. We use a number 10, two and a half inch outdoor screws, two different hinges, a two and a half inch hinge and a four inch hinge. The four inch hinges are gonna be for the top, the two and a half inch hinges will be for each one of the door flaps. Two handles for lifting the top of the feeder open to fill feed into. We're gonna be using the Type Bond 3 wood glue. You've, you've actually seen us gluing all those pieces together. And then of course we'll be using these as we attach all of the rest of the feeder together. We talked about lumber. You're gonna need seven pieces of two by 12 by 10. So that's two by 12s, 10 feet long. We, we're using seven pieces. We actually may have an extra piece, so we may only actually need six. One two by 10 by eight, one two by eight by eight, and two two by six by eight. In addition to that, you'll wanna have some piece of, like a four by eight piece of plywood. You're gonna be using that for a couple different areas, including the flaps, unless you can find a better material for the flaps, which we're still searching for. So as far as the cuts that you've seen, that you've seen us make, you saw us cutting several of the two by 12s to six foot pieces or six foot lengths. That's what you see behind me here, as well as a two by six that was cut to six foot length. And then of course for the base, we have the two by 12 and we have the two by 10 that were cut, both cut to a six foot length. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get to sanding, flatten out these pieces here so we can go ahead and get the rest of this feeder together. So I have everything sanded down. Now these aren't perfect. It is a pig feeder after all, but we have our two by 12 and our two by 10. This is our base. So now what we're gonna do is start assembling the pig feeder itself. So we're gonna start with the back. 
This would be, again, they're all six feet wide. So this is 36 inches. It's not perfect because it's dimensional lumber, but this should all work out in the end because it's all dimensional lumber. But we have a 36 inch back. We're gonna go ahead and get the back attached first and then basically just kind of work our way forward. I probably should say that I'm a big fan of drilling pilot holes. Using screws so you're not splitting your boards, pilot hole, then your screw. Okay, so you can see the base and the back here in the feeder. The feed's gonna basically be back in here. So a couple things we're gonna be putting in here, but before we get to it, we need to start building the feeder forward. So the next piece that we're gonna be putting in is a two by six. So I've got a two by six that's gonna go all the way to the very front of each one of these sides. Then we'll have a two by six that goes between those two that's actually gonna form the very front of the feeder. the area where the feed's gonna go into, at least on the base is assembled, and the whole front face plate is, is assembled. So now a couple things while I can get into here. Caulking, I need to make sure I get all of my silicone caulking done in here. Uh, we do want this to be as waterproof as we can make it. It does have dry feed in here. We're gonna be doing that in the next step. We're also gonna be assembling our side panels here, which is where the feed chute is gonna be. And as part of that feed chute, I'm actually gonna be using the plywood that's down underneath our feet. So I'm also gonna assemble the base of that chute that's gonna be angled, that's gonna slide all of the feed forward and into the front part of this. Side panels, so you know that we're gonna be installing here, those are a two by eight. So we have eight inches deep, and then of course the two inch wide, the standard sizing boards, all the way up here to the top. So you're gonna see essentially that side piece here on both sides, while I can still get in here and get everything sealed. This is 10 inches wide, and then it's the 68 and three quarters or so wide. That's our actual width on the inside. Half an inch to three quarters of an inch from the top have this screwed in. So now what we're gonna do is take a nice thick layer of silicone, go through here to get that sealed, get the base sealed as well. We have all of this back piece sealed. Everything on the inside actually is completely sealed. But before we put on that front plate, we need to get our dividers in. Now, when we were cutting the wood, we were cutting one foot sections of this two by 12 off. And essentially what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be cutting out dividers that are about five inches tall by about nine inches deep. So we're gonna cut those pieces out of these blocks that we've got as scrap. You can see how that turned out. We wound up going on basically one foot center. So we went three foot here towards them in the middle and then at four and five and then here at two and one. It leaves these first ones, I think, just a little bit different size than these others, but for the most part, it's fairly even for each one of these pig heads that's gonna be in here. Now what we need to do is go ahead and put the front plate on to get this whole thing kind of secured from the front. One thing I wanna point out, so we are using dimensional lumber. So we already knew when we measured the front of this, which is 30 inches as far as the depth, we had 36 inches on the back with dimensional lumber. So we knew we would have a little bit of a gap. So you can see down here, we have the gap right here at the base. And what we did was just basically cut some pieces of cardboard to make a shim that allowed this to sit flush with the top. That's the key, we want the top flush. And what we'll do is come back and basically just cut these shims back 
glue them together with wood glue and basically just cut them to size in here so we won't have this gap and have the ability for rainwater or creepy crawlers or anything like that to get in through the sides. So we'll go ahead and cut the shims down. But the next thing that we need to do is we need to get these flaps done while we have the space up here and it's easy to work with. What we're gonna be utilizing for this will be back to the plywood. So we'll be making sure that we have about a one inch overhang. That way the pigs can get their snouts underneath and lift up, which they'll do naturally. And then each one of these gets its own little flap so that a pig can be in there one by one. So we've got some hinges, those little two and a half inch hinges. And then one other thing we're gonna to add to those hinges as opposed to screws. These two and a half inch hinges come with wood screws attached. Now we've learned pretty quickly that pigs do a fantastic job of ripping these right out of the wood. So instead we have some machine screws. We've got uh, one machine screw is about an inch and a half long and another machine screw is about two and a half inches long. The idea is the two and a half inches will go through the back board here on the, one to on the top hinge, and then these smaller screws will go through the bottom. That way the pigs have, well, less of a chance of ripping the bolts out versus the screws. So Lori and I are gonna go ahead and get to work, get each the single piece cut so we know we have the right length here, and then cut into in individual uh, flaps and attach to hinges. We have the flaps on. You can see these are all working just fine. It's a little loud. We've learned that there's not a whole lot you can put underneath these that the pigs won't chew off. And trust me, they will chew these off. So the reality is these are fairly temporary. So I did have to call a couple audibles I want to tell you about. First thing would be the bolt size uh, for these front flaps. It was way too long for what we were doing. However, I did have a grinder. All I did was just grind these down. That way the pig's snouts don't get caught on those bolts. So I was able to grind those down because I also didn't have lock nuts. Grinding that down and then using a file, I was able to file them kind of flat, mushroom them out just a little bit so that those nuts can't pull back out. Either way, we're gonna to have to be replacing these once a year, maybe every couple years anyway. One of the things that I didn't consider when I was drawing out the plans was how this piece here attaches to the base. The way we had it originally, the only attachments were basically along the back, and we wanted to make sure that we had another um, attachment of the front of this half, so this half of this top half, attached to the bottom. So I used a basic one by four and attached it in a couple different spots here as well as in the upright to make sure that this is not gonna sway back and forth this way. So you need to add that to your, your supply list unless you can figure out something else. I suppose you could probably use some type of metal bracket like a Simpson tie or something like that. You would be able to attach that as well. It might actually be a little bit cleaner. However, when we're done painting, it won't make a difference for us. Okay, so what we have left is we know, still need to get the top put on and the hinge placed. First thing, of course, Lori and I need to do is get this up off of here. But before we do that, we're gonna go through with caulking and seal all of our gaps because at this point, we have everything that's going to be glued, glued. So last night we were able to get this painted. So you can see we chose gray. That's only because we have some leftovers from the house build. You can paint it any color, but we got that sealed. So the whole thing is sealed in really well. Now we need to go ahead and move to the top. So we are gonna make one small change because of this gap that's here between these two three foot two by 12 boards. We're gonna go ahead and put a one by four piece that's gonna basically cover that gap to make sure it remains waterproof here on the top so we can keep as much water out of the feeder as possible. So we're gonna attach that with a couple of two inch screws and then we're gonna be using these four inch hinges that we have, two on each side of these three foot sections of this top. So we're gonna go ahead and get these installed.
see we have this just about wrapped up. Now, one thing I wanna point out that we found is very important is how you have these hinged. So obviously that's gonna be out in the pen or the area that you have your pigs. So they're gonna be feeding on that side. And obviously we wanna be able to fill the feeder over the fence itself. So we have these opening. So they open from the back and angle out to the front this way. That'll allow me to fill feed in here and be able to not be in with the pig. So I can come right back, lift these back over and shut that and have it be sealed and watertight. So last thing that we need to get done is not necessary as far as the feeder is concerned, but we are gonna place feed on here so that we can actually get the pallet forks with the tractor and actually lift this thing, even if it's got feed in it, we'll be able to get underneath it and lift this thing and move it around if we need to. So we're gonna go ahead and flip this over, add three feet to the back so that we can actually utilize pallet forks. We were able to get this moved out last night. We had some time for the pigs to actually get some dinner in on this. It took them a few minutes to figure out there's more than two spots for their heads to go. So there's six of them that were all feeding at the same time. We're waiting for them to wake up this morning, so hopefully we can get some footage for you guys of them actually using it. However, wanted to point out a couple things. All of these areas are completely full of food. And they fed last night and it stayed nice and full. So that auto feed from that angle of that plate in the back is working just fine. In addition, we were able to fill the feeder itself. So if you look at the feeder level, you can see obviously they were feeding pretty high on here. I had leveled this out last night, but essentially we put 300 pounds of feed in here. So we had six 50 pound bags of pelletized feed fit in here. And you can see we still had plenty of space, so I'm sure we could easily fit another 100 pounds of feed in here. So I'm gonna say estimate would be, you can probably fit about 400 pounds of feed in here at a given time. One of the other things that we wanted to do with this design was fill from the back. So you'll see these are gonna slide open. And this is wide enough that my tractor bucket is gonna be able to fill this. So I'll be able to take the bags of feed, fill the bucket, and then fill the feeder. Now, I think there's a few little pals right behind Lori that want to try this out this morning. So we're going to go ahead and get out of the way and see what they think. So there you have it. We've got eight pigs that are all comfortably feeding this morning <laughs> as they kind of go in and out. They still get a little confused thinking that they have to double up, but for the most part, they're all getting food and there's not too many fights, at least so far this morning. Overall, I think this is gonna do just fine for these eight pigs, and the reality is we could easily double this amount of pigs and this feeder would suit it just fine. So just wanna thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section down below. Our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. That's a free painless way to help support the channel. If you start with that link, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you.